can you tell us a little bit more about your background and how you really came up with this idea? I know you maybe touched on it briefly, but more of what inspired you and what motivated you to write this? Uh, I was trained as a clinical psychologist. And uh, my first job was at uh, the National Children's Hospital. And uh, I was telling, uh, I was talking about this earlier, that I was playing chutes and ladders with a little five-year-old child. And this child started beating me in the game. And I found myself competing with him. And I said, you know, I'm in the wrong profession. I shouldn't be competing with this little boy. I should be trying to treat him. And so I went to a headhunter, somebody who helps you with their job, with your job. And I said, I really am kind of an entrepreneur. I was trained as a, as a psychologist, but I really want to go into business. And he said, why don't you do what you were trained to do, but get on your feet? And so it was like one of these eye-opening <laughs> insights that this person gave me. And I started imagining that I was trained to sit down and listen to people's problems, but I could actually stand up and go out and teach people about the principles of behavioral and psychological science as it relates to doing business. And that's really how my career started. Then I started working with the Business Roundtable, which is a group of large corporations in America. And I watched how they were managing and mismanaging the human side of their businesses. And I got very interested in, is it possible that people can get what they need and want from their organizations the same way that their organizations can get what they need and want from their people. And that really started my career. I, I then got a, uh, a five-year grant from the MacArthur Foundation in <coughs> Chicago to study leadership and healthy organizations. And I started interviewing CEOs. And that's really where I learned about business, by going out and talking to CEOs and learning about uh, their personal aspirations, what they're scared about, uh, how they were building companies and the like. Uh, one of the things I learned from uh, Lorenzo Zambrano, uh, who I interviewed in Monterey, because uh, he's the CEO of Semex, which I believe is the second largest cement company in the world. And, uh, and what they did was they came to the United States. One of the things they do is they deliver cement in the developing world. And they have a niche. Um, in order to do that. So they take cement and they help to build buildings in Peru and in Indonesia and in Asia and throughout South America. And one of the things they needed to do is they needed to learn how to build buildings and bring cement to construction sites on a quick basis. And so they came to the United States and they studied Federal Express and they studied ambulance services in terms of how they use computers to monitor and track what's going on around them. And they brought those computers into their cement trucks. And so they're able to side, they're, they're able to travel around very congested cities in the developing world to get to sites on time. And they mastered this technology by going from Mexico to the United States to learn the technology, bringing it back to Mexico, and then taking it all around the world. A great example of a global company headquartered in Mexico.